Hello listeners, Sultan Chief Pippin Ava Major here just to introduce this little interview segment we've put together for you. This week you'll be hearing from Daisy and Gary about their experiences in making Clockwork Bird. Next week you'll hear from Jesse and Alex. A longer unedited version of this interview, which is full of giggling and some ribbing at me and just <laughs> general hilarity, is available over on our Patreon along with a load of other great behind-the-scenes content, including table reads for Spirit Box Radio, our other podcast, a load of information from me about the process of making Clockwork Bird, and we also do monthly tarot readings over there. So if that sounds something that you'd be interested in doing, membership starts from £2 a month. We're over at patreon.com forward slash hanging source studios. And there's a link in the description. Without further ado, I'll let Gary and Daisy take it away. I'm Daisy and I'm 22. Um, I've just finished a drama degree and I'm looking to go and do a master's. I'm an actor and a writer and a director and I play Shelley. I'm Gary. I'm Pip and Daisy's dad, which I'm sure had nothing whatsoever to do with my casting. (laughs) Um, And I have no relevant CV to speak of. Did you like the character you played in the show? Her heart is in the right place, even though I don't think her head always is. And All of the decisions she makes have the potential to go very, very wrong. Yes, indeed, which is deeply alarming and exasperating to Dave, obviously. Yes, do you like Dave? I do like Dave. I think he's a fundamentally good character, which obviously, because we got the scripts as as they were written, mm-hmm. uh, we, we didn't know that he was going to end up being... There, no. there, was, there, was, there were plenty of moments when it appeared he might be... He was hiding something, wasn't yeah, he? Yeah, he might, he might turn out to be an impediment to Shelley or, or even kind of an adversary, but mm. he, he seemed to me, as written, to be quite concerned about her, quite, quite genuinely caring. He was a bit of a father figure, so mm-hmm. typecasting. Woohoo! That was easy to play, wasn't it? Yeah, he was exasperated a lot, and I didn't find that a stretch either. Wow. Did you enjoy playing your characters? It was it was good. It was fun. I've not really done. I don't think I've done any voice acting before, so that was like a new take on something I've been doing for a long time, which was really cool. Um, it was nice to play a different type of character. I quite often get comedic roles, um, and Shelley wasn't that. Also, ah. nice to be the centre of attention. Indeed, the star. Yeah. Indeed. Uh-huh. It's about me. It's and not. It's not about Shelley at all. Shelley's just the eyes through which we learn. Uh, yeah, she's our proxy, isn't she? She, mm-hmm. she? She's the one who um, uncovers the plot. I really enjoyed it. It was really good. Mm-hmm. I enjoyed playing Dave. I thought it was good. Like, say, we, we got to squabble a lot, which was always fun. Mm-hmm. Apart from the row, we found quite difficult. We had an idea of how we wanted to do it, but it was quite a big chunk of text, and because it was a row, it wasn't like... There were some other bits that... Like the episode that was just Shelley and Dave, because the tone changed, we were able to s- cut it into smaller bits to record to make it an easier record for us, but with the argument, it kind of all needed to be done in one chunk. It did. And there was a lot of giggles. And, yeah, multiple takes. Would you take your character out for a pint at the pub? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. I feel like she's probably a bit busy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The one out of all of the characters I'd most like to go for a pint with is Shelley, and then I think Alice. I don't know that Dave would particularly want to go for a pint with me, really. I don't know. I don't know mm. what we'd talk about. Do you think your character was in the right or in the wrong? during the run of the show. Yeah, he seemed like a thoroughly decent chap, didn't he? He was very earnest always and a bit... He was a bit boring, wasn't he? He was very cautious and very... Mm-hmm. But courageous in the end. I admire him, definitely. He was always really interested in in doing the right thing and it was clearly a thing that was at war in his head, whether what was the right thing was what he felt and what he believed or whether that was the right thing was what 
the rules and regulations at his job were saying and I think that that's he had true, to yeah, choose yeah. that and in the end he he chose to go with he resigned himself to having to make the moral choice rather than mm-hmm. the self interest but again i thought he was always i i thought he was always going to if someone was to ask you what you thought clockwork bird was about what would you tell them it's about 20 to 25 minutes an episode oh shut up being human what does that mean what makes us human yeah, it's about technology. It's about mm-hmm. um, it's at least superficially preoccupied with uh, exactly as you say. I think about whether what whether Robin is alive or dead, whether Robin is human or not, whether Robin is Robin, and what it means. Yeah, what it means. Um, what makes up a person? Who? What makes us who we are? And also, how far is too far in terms of you know the technology advances like we were watching that thing the other day that was talking about um like in in real life not podcast land about them making um like artificial limbs that have ai in them yeah i think it was also um in in being about technology it was also to some extent about privacy intrusiveness um yeah about um what what uh, uh the Eliza and the snake, um, mm-hmm. really interesting from that point of view, the way that they um, intrude into um, the, the the characters' lives, the way they influence, the way mm-hmm. overhearing is really important and recurrent. Because and, well, that's how it learns. Yeah, yeah. And how um, Shelley... Shelley has a real relationship with Eliza. That's a real for for Shelley. Yeah, yeah. That's a real important friendship. And for most of the show, it's um, Eliza's her confidant and who she trusts and relies on. Indeed, wh- which is interesting because she's she doesn't she doesn't trust Dave because she knows Dave's not telling her everything, but she thinks that's because he's evil. Mm-hmm. And she's not got Alice in. Um, for one time, she doesn't really have many other people. Um, and the data thing you mentioned is is interesting as well because a couple of times it's kind of mentioned that that's part of what went down with Darwin and the synapses is that mm-hmm. there was stuff because of how they were collecting data and storing our memories. When you bear in mind that the whole structure and the whole narrative driven by those recordings which which are intrusive and invasive and yeah because sophie doesn't know she's being recorded no and uh, um and they're critical to unlocking the truth so mm-hmm. that kind of um paradox is really interesting yeah um i think that it's mostly about like all dramas are though it's about the characters isn't it and the interplay of those mm-hmm. characters all the the um relationships and i think what you said before touching on that idea of identity what is it to have an identity who are you they're all a little bit conflicted about who they are aren't they yeah what their role is what they're supposed to be doing what how did they end up in all of that? and that's what makes it compelling i think that's what made it made it yeah. compelling to play anyway and that they're all even if you don't agree as you know the person listening or the person playing the characters at times it's so clear mm-hmm. that um, Creaky chair. <laughs> um, that at every point, each character is always trying to do what they believe is right. Mm-hmm. Whether you agree that what they think is right is the correct thing to do, mm-hmm. um, they always think they're. Which is an interesting take on on those, you know, on on warring, conflicting opinions. That it's important to remember that both sides always think they're right. Mm-hmm. I don't know that this is particularly um, a particularly acute observation. It's also interesting that a podcast podcast that's about identity, about who all these people are, the the character it's named for, the central character, is kind of a space, a void that yeah, he's not we there. never meet him. What was your favourite part of the show? I really like the bits at the end when we're all together figuring out what's going on and the the pieces are slowly starting to come together it becomes clear what everyone's part is in the show 
I think I really liked the Dave and Shelley scene the best. I thought there was a really good dynamic, particularly our row, that it was a struggle to record, but was really good fun and challenging and interesting. And it was a really interesting part of the story as well. Critical to how the story unfolds, how their relationship develops and changes, and that it's really good. Mm-hmm. Another one of my favourite bits um, is the bit when Shelley first gets all of the information about who Yuko are and who Darwin is and all of that, and she's reading through all of that. that just because I found that stuff interesting to read. I actually learned quite a lot. <laughs> I also like the bit where they discovered Darwin as well, because although it all happens off stage, it was really gross. Which is oh, when he's dead, thing. yeah, 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 that was really gross. It was really, really visceral. The mm. language that's used, um, and I feel like it probably probably says a lot about Pip. But Pip's really good at writing that stuff. What was your favourite thing about the process of making this podcast? Getting to act with you. That was really, really good fun. It was. It and was fun. It was really challenging trying to keep up and um, a bit of a stretch at times, but really, really good. And also pretending that there wasn't a pandemic on. Before yeah, I having to... something to do Yeah, that was um, creative and engaging. But like for me, during a time when my industry doesn't exist, Indeed. having this um, to work on was, was really fun. Yeah, hanging out was just nice. A lot of giggles. Mm-hmm. No, I just really, I also really liked um, all the compliments of everyone telling me how great I am. Indeed. Um, As Lady Gaga once said, yeah, yeah. I live for the applause. Absolutely. Um, and I really enjoyed fishing for them and not entirely getting them. I'd also like to say uh, thanks, Pip. Yeah, thanks, Pip. Thanks for asking us because it was brilliant and we had good fun. Mm-hmm. Um, and thanks for it. Thanks for how good it was. It was yeah. really engaging and engrossing. It makes the experience so much better when we're, when you're acting from a good script. And I know because I have acted from some shit ones. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's another thing I really liked about the show. It's so queer. Mm-hmm. Um, and that is excellent and really nice. And you can really tell that it was written entirely by a queer person and was worked on by predominantly queer people and more of that i think there should be we need more of that in the world keep it up all right and that's the end of that interview i hope you enjoyed getting to know daisy and gary a bit better obviously because they record in wales and there's been a pandemic on you don't really get as many segments of bloopers or anything from them as you do um, from me and Jesse and Alex who all live together in the same house so we all record together um, but yeah, that's a little bit of an insight into their experience of recording the show just a little note on what my dad said at the end there, we are certainly keeping it up, we have another podcast Spirit Box Radio which is performed by all the same cast except rejigged slightly I play the main character Sam Enfield who is the unlikely host of the Spirit Box Radio Advice and Community segment which he really struggles doing because he has absolutely no magical abilities or so he says if you would like to support the show as I said at the beginning of this please come over and check out our Patreon Um, I would really love to be able to compensate our brilliant actors for all of the work that they do here thank you so much for being a part of what has made the process of making this podcast so rewarding and and so great it's just amazing to see people listening to the show and talking about the show so you know we we really do read all of the reviews and the 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 stuff that people are saying on twitter and stuff so you know tag us and we're at hanging slots on twitter so come and check us out and say hi we love to hear from you we love to hear what you think drop in to us on our website which is hangingsawstudios.wordpress.com and like i said there will be unedited versions of both this week's gary and daisy interview and next week's jesse and alex interview available to patrons over on our patreon which is patreon.com forward slash hanging sauce studios and they'll be there amongst all of our other behind the scenes stuff and our behind the scenes podcast hanging with the sloths which i do and the tarot readings that we do we just do a whole bunch of stuff over there so you can check us out anyway thank you <laughs>